Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another edition of Let's Talk Chelsea. Hope you're doing well and keeping safe on this Tuesday. In today's episode, going to be reflecting a little bit on last night's win against Newcastle in the Premier League. And also, before we wrap up today's episode, focusing a little bit on transfers, not only in terms of transfer rumours and news recently from the likes of Matt Law and Fabrizio Romano surrounding some Chelsea targets, that centre-back conundrum and, and how Chelsea apparently are going to be prioritising centre-back and striker in the summer but also asking you guys and having that discussion are there other places Chelsea need to strengthen if we're going to be serious title challengers next season in the Premier League we'll get into all of that stuff and more firstly want to ask you guys if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload also hit the like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well I also want to say a massive thank you to Lucid FC for sponsoring today's episode of Let's Talk Chelsea and sponsoring the show and the channel in 2021 and want to tell you about their spring summer collection which has come out recently lucid fc's new collection brings party nights of the past to the new modern lifestyle staying ahead of the curb lucid fc's collection can be translated everywhere from the club to more relaxed environments and also to our insular everyday thank you lucid fc for sponsoring the channel and want to say next week stay tuned because going to have an exclusive offer for the channel ahead of that massive champions league game against atletico madrid from lucid fc for you guys exclusively on the channel so thank you once again lucid fc for sponsoring let's talk chelsea in 2021 but let's get into last night's win. A big win for Chelsea in the context of this Premier League season. A 2-0 win over Newcastle. I just think the basic thing of, I know there are some things we can complain about in terms of maybe not putting opponents away more, not, not scoring more goals, but just Chelsea winning games professionally at the moment, I think is something that has been lacking for a long time. So I think we just got to be satisfied with that and just satisfied that our club are winning games again consistently because we haven't had that recently. So I think you've got to be pleased by that, the way the players are clearly buying into Thomas Tuchel's methods very early on the way it's translating into good results on the pitch and I think better performances hopefully are on the way and um, it's just a madness of this Premier League season that we are two points clear of Liverpool getting close to March I think if you would have told Chelsea fans that at the start of the year I think many of us would have thought well we're going to be in a serious title challenge then but obviously that's not the way it's turned out but I think for Chelsea the madness of this Premier League season uh, if Chelsea keep on winning games and with our current form maybe against Southampton that massive game against Man United that comes after the Atletico Madrid Champions League tie Chelsea are going to be in a really good position if we win both of those games and I know I'm a little bit dreaming and you know there needs to be that nuance and that understanding that I think a lot of the teams Chelsea have faced so far on the Tuchel have been of a similar nature of sitting quite deep and I think it's a positive thing to look at the way Chelsea are dealing with low blocks this season and sort of doing a lot better against them than they were last year you know that was a big problem for Chelsea dealing with deep defences it seems we do have more solutions to them um, it's just a case of teams actually this season it seems to be the reverse this season teams who press us a little bit higher we struggle against and that's going to be the thing for Tuchel now at least for me going into these games against Southampton against South Atletico Madrid, who I know are going to give us a lot of the ball, but they do have world-class finishes as well. And especially Man United. I mean, Man United, quite a difficult team to gauge on the Solskjaer in terms of the way they approach big games. They may do the same thing as, say, Newcastle and Tottenham and sit a little bit deeper, but we know the pace they do have on the break. And it's going to be interesting to see, especially in central midfield, how Tuchel tactically approaches those games. But we want to focus on some of the key performers last night, Mateo Kovacic, Kepa Rizablaga and uh, Timo Werner getting back to scoring ways in the Premier League. But I first want to talk about Kepa Rizablaga vlogger that was a big call um, it paid off I think the most interesting thing and it's typical I was recording my review as I do for, for nearly all games of just after the final whistle so I don't get to see Thomas Tuchel's post-match interview most of the time and typically in that interview he spoke about how Mendy's now first choice he's guaranteed first choice he'll be back in the team against Southampton and Keppel was just given his chance to, to get his confidence up which I think worked and I think it shows you the pragmatic approach of Thomas Tuchel at the moment really reintegrating players I think if you take your emotional hat or at least the the hat of looking at these players based on history and looking at it from a more detached view of a new coach coming into a team and bringing all players together that feel a little bit disconnected before he arrived. I think he's done it very smartly in truth of, of knowing that sure some of these players like Kepa, like Marcus Alonso, others too may not be here beyond next season but he's like we'll wait to the summer to deal with that you know right now I want to utilize all the players I have get them on board and hopefully get Chelsea a good end to the season. So I think Kepa obviously worked out and good for him a positive night for Kepa Rizabalaga 
Odegaard, despite the fact that Mendy will be back in goal as first choice on Saturday. But another player I want to talk about is Mateo Kovacic. He was absolutely outstanding last night. He really was. Just looking at some of the stats and his performances from here, I uh, expected Chelsea on Twitter account. I always shout out on the channel. Statistically, so impressive from him once again. But I also found this from Skorka Football really interesting. Most take-ons completed in a home game in the Premier League this season. Uh, the top three, Pulisic, Kovacic and Adama Traore. Mateo Kovacic is the only player to attempt eight plus take-ons in a home game this season and complete 100% of them. And I just think you've got to be really happy with the way Kovacic has found form under Thomas Tuchel. His game seems simplified. He's having an influence on the final third, being that ball carrier from deep, progressing the ball really well, which has been an issue for Chelsea in the past, especially from central midfield. And he seems to be uh, flowing with confidence at the moment. And I found this uh, quote from Thomas Tuchel after the game around Kovacic and why he likes him so much. Really intriguing. He said, I love him. You can wake him up at 3 a.m. and he'll be ready to train at Cobham at 3.15. And it illustrates how important Kovacic is to Tuchel at the moment and sort of the way he's constructing this midfield that is benefiting Kovacic and Jorginho as well in terms of being a team now that once again wants to have a lot more of the ball, which is going to favour players like Jorginho and Kovacic who are comfortable in possession. Um, I just think for Kovacic, it's having that influence. The technique and guile of this player, elegance on the pitch has never been doubted. I don't think it should have ever been doubted. I don't think that's ever been the criticism. And if it was the criticism around, around his technique, I think that's a little bit simplistic. I think we always knew the quality was there. I think the case of a cover on the pitch is having those instructions and that sort of clear plan of what to do on the pitch, which it seems he now has on a Thomas Tuchel when he's flourishing once again. Um, I really hope against bigger teams now he can really show up because he's had some really good performances. If he can replicate these good performances against the likes of Atletico Madrid and especially Man and United in the Premier League, you have to be impressed by Kovacic and it really looks like a player transformed. But you have to give credit to Kovacic at the moment. I felt Timo was just man of the match last night as a lot of you guys voted for it on, on my uh, poll on the community page. Um, but Kovacic absolutely was a very close second. A masterful performance by Kovacic and deserves a lot of credit at the moment because he's playing so well under Thomas Tuchel. And Timo Werner too, finally getting that goal. I did mention last night about his goal involvement despite not scoring himself in recent games and expected Chelsea covers his here. Chelsea's last five Premier League goals scoring of course the goal the second goal against Newcastle last night but of course Werner's deflected cross converted by Giroud for the first goal last night uh, penalty won by Werner against Sheffield United the assist for Mason Mount's goal against Sheffield United and winning the penalty against Tottenham it was lovely as well seeing all the players celebrating with him and uh, Timo you know it's just his all-round game I think is there now and it's just hopefully it's that goal that gives him the spark finally and maybe that one thing to trigger a run of great goal scoring form at a time where Chelsea really need it which is hopefully what we need and you do wonder if if Timo Werner in a dream scenario turns into a great goal scorer once again for Chelsea and now starts finishing chances rapidly and that's the thing that he needs to get his confidence back in front of goal the complexion that I'm going to come on to in terms of targets you wonder if that sort of shifts as we get close to the summer but for Timo Werner it's wonderful I think he has clarity now of where he's playing in the system he's not going to be that main striker it doesn't feel like at the moment he's sort of securing that left number 10 position left field position and you saw the relationship he had with Marcus Alonso last night those two interchanging a lot which really helps when you've got Marcus Alonso because he loves to be in the box so that really helps Timo find space on the left um, I'm just intrigued to see if say Ben Chirwell too because we saw against Sheffield United Ben Chirwell finding Timo Werner quite well we've seen those two work a good partnership in the past as well and um, so it may be about those two rotating but especially down the left Timo is having an influence now which maybe he wasn't in the past and it's great to see that Thomas Tuchel maybe is starting to get the best out of Timo Werner we have to wait to see the next five games if he can continue scoring especially if he scores say against Atletico Madrid that'd be a massive massive goal for Timo Werner but it's great to see a great night for him a bit like Kepa Riza Balaga getting form and getting confidence back which We've seen in recent weeks it was just about getting that goal for him and hopefully this is the spot that gets him on a good goal scoring run for Chelsea once again let me know your opinions on Timo Werner and the future on the Thomas Tuchel in the comments below and as I referred to earlier in the video in terms of transfers I wanted to sort of touch on some of the targets recently and some of the speculation because uh, Matt Law I think in one of his pieces recently was talking about striker and uh, centre-back being sort of the key targets for Chelsea in the summer and David Alaba is a massive target apparently for Chelsea or one target that's constantly been touted as one Chelsea are trying to get done in the summer but it does appear once again that Real Madrid lead the race for David Alaba and for Rizzo Romano are reporting yesterday that David Alaba has reached a verbal agreement with Real Madrid since the beginning of January his pre-contract until June 2025 is almost ready not signed yet Chelsea Liverpool as other clubs are still trying to convince him but Alaba's priority is joining Real Madrid not that surprising in truth when you looked at the wages last week and Chelsea sort of being scared by them as being reported by Matt Law that I touched on on the channel and it's a bit of a shame because 
because Alaba, as reported by Matt Law here, as tweeted by Matt Law here recently, in terms of not only Umpa Meccano, who of course went to Bayern Munich, that was confirmed, so that's another player off the list that Chelsea could have went for in the summer. But this is what Matt Law has to say about the whole centre-back Alaba, Umpa Meccano situation. Chelsea were unquestionably interested in Umpa Meccano, but I'm told their scouts weren't fully convinced, suspect they weren't keen enough to get into a bidding war over his wages. As reported this week, Alaba wages currently too high, and I'm also told he would like to play defensive midfield. Clear that Chelsea will prioritise central defender and a striker in the summer. The interest in Haaland dates back to his RB Salzburg days, but his wages and Raiola are a problem, not just for Chelsea. I think my whole point is I, I would like to see Chelsea go for an older option, mostly to clear a path for younger players potentially, but also if Chelsea are really serious about the Premier League title next season, I think you need someone, in, especially in a defensive sense, who doesn't need a lot of time to adjust, like Thiago Silva, who can come in, can give you instant results, can be a guaranteed starter for Thomas Tuchel um, in a back three or a back four and, and I think that's maybe where Chelsea will go towards if they're looking at a bright future for Mark Gurhi and for Kyle Tsumori and even Ethan Ampadu potentially returning for Chelsea as well so I'd rather go for an older player that doesn't mean someone in their 30s you know Rafa Varane is, is prime of his career at the moment 26 27 really good age to bring into the Premier League as a defender um, but Alaba would have been an incredible player to buy and I think Marquinhos as I've mentioned before not specifically a centre-back can play in a variety of positions I think would be a really intelligent signing i just want to ask you guys in the comments and also i'll probably put a poll up in terms of this not only in terms of actual names that we discussed but also positions are there positions where you think chelsea need to strengthen don't need to strengthen of course we spent a lot of money last summer and despite some of those signings not playing recently like like hakim ziyash and ben Sherwell and kai havertz being out on the sidelines i think all three of those players are going to be key players next season i still have this feeling that marcus alonso and kepa reese balaga and players of that ilk won't be here next year i think this is a short term sort of solution by uh, Thomas Tuchel to bring players on board as I discussed earlier and I think that Chirwell being a long term signing Hakim Ziyech to uh, Kai Havertz with his fitness issues and sort of adaptability to the Premier League I think next year you'll see these players a lot more um, but in terms of Chelsea signing players central midfield I think is a key one a natural DM which we've lacked for a long time I said this in added time yesterday when I asked a question about this of prioritising a DM but there may be a sense that Thomas Tuchel may not want a DM because in his midfield field he sees a more creative player someone who is a bit more of a regista like Jorginho now that could mean there could be someone else out in the market that took or could prioritize in the summer over Jorginho but let me know your opinions on that the transfer rumors the whole situation around Alaba other centre-back targets and midfield all of that good stuff let me know in the comments below but that is it for this edition of Let's Talk Chelsea thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch it if you did enjoy it hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea have a great day and I'll see you again